whisper something happy in my ear. Here at the North Carolina Museum of Art, um, one of my favorite places here in North Carolina, to have breakfast with um, the Triangle Environmentalist of Color. And they're having it in one of the art, or near one of the art installations. So, really excited. What's the official name? Oh, it's too long. Um, G Clock. So, Growing Environmental and Conservation Leaders of Color. Okay, and it's triangle specific. It is. Well, it's North Carolina specific. Okay. But we congregate in triangle. And what's your name? Mavis Graggs. Mavis Graggs. And how are you tied into this group? Um, I just like getting black people together to be social. Black conservationists, environmentalists. I like for us to have a space where we can share and let our hair down and yeah. listen to yeah. awesome be okay in our black and greenness exactly <laughs> The key ways to stay balanced when you are black and green is to make sure that you find a tribe that you're able to connect with instantly, um, culturally, um, at, at, you know, as far as your ethnicity, etc. And so I'm really, really happy to have found this group. Mavis actually invited me to breakfast this morning because this was something that I needed um, in my own professional experience as a black woman working in the environmental space. So now I'm about to go eat me some breakfast. I can paraphrase what the artist's intent was, but it really was meant to convey a sense of home and a sense of place. And I think that this group does that for me. Well, I know that, that this group does that for me. Um, but this structure is art, but it's meant to bring people together. And it's meant to be used completely. So, if, you know, some of you have already climbed up on the roof. Mm -hmm. Feel free to climb up on the roof again, dance on the roof. This is this particular one is in honor of Funkadelic. There's three more installations across the country. This is the last one. Um, but yeah, how about we go around the room and introduce ourselves. And since we have just started fall, I'll do my favorite thing, a hashtag to describe your summer. And so I was living with the surrogate grandfather. And about two years in, he said to me, Boy, all you ever going to be is a preacher, teacher, mom. Dang. And so life went in different directions, but by the time I was 19, I was in school in Chicago, four-year scholarship, football, Northwestern University, graduated, blah, blah, blah. I thought I would never come back. And so Chicago, Austin, Texas, Chapel Hill, Asheville, I was doing everything but coming back to the great state of North Carolina and the great city of Raleigh. And uh, about three years ago, we moved back. So that said, I'm now the project manager over our eighth preserve called Walnut Hill. And it's a 405 acre cotton plantation that was in the family for 225 years. It was a community that was unincorporated sitting between Clayton, Magdale, Randall, and Raleigh, where individuals growing up in that community went from enslavement to sharecroppers to landowners probably one of the highest concentrated areas of black family on hand in the region. Uh, but where we are from is Western North Carolina. Um, and so even though we're classically trained instrumentalists, we're both classically trained violinists, but we also play up to seven or eight instruments each. Um, not all the same instruments. We um, opened a music school in Southeast Raleigh. We have taught together. Um, as Rob previously mentioned, um, we, we cooperate a um, nonprofit called TW2 Inc. It's been in existence to, since 2013. And so we started with that mission um, to uh, have outreach in community centers, alternative schools, rehabilitation centers with uh, children that um, have disabilities as well as cognitive um, and otherwise, and of course in our vulnerable communities um, that are disenfranchised the most. And so we found ourselves across the state as performers, um, but also as educators. Um, so today, even though we're classically trained, we're actually going to give you a piece of our family history. Um, and so we presented this for the first time uh, this winter at the Museum of History for the African American uh, Cultural Festival, Smithsonian Affiliate Event. Um, it's the first time that we, as the descendants of a settlement in 
deep in the mountains have actually come forth to tell this. Mm -hmm. um, we are one of the first generations to um, actually break the code of silence. Mm -hmm. And so that comes with a lot of responsibility and a lot of weight. Um, but we felt it was time as a group um, that we share our story because a lot of people don't know that we exist in the mountains. But they also don't know that the Kingdom of the Happy Land, which is the name of the settlement, existed in Tuxedo, North Carolina, up by the old Saluda, not the new Saluda. It was on the Spartanburg, Cherokee, South Carolina line, so it split North Carolina and South Carolina. After the emancipation, um, our ancestors, who were actually here, this is part of the story, uh, prior to the transatlantic slave trade, we came from Africa before. That story is not often told um, because it takes away the power of some of our families that we brought ourselves here. And so we were here prior in the mountains. We owned hundreds and hundreds of acres. And during slavery, we were sold, taken, stripped off our land, sold to Mississippi. After emancipation, our people actually journeyed back and walked the thousands of miles back so that they knew where they were going and went home. Everything's gonna be alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through weary tribulations and trials, through 